How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that's been a quarter of a century now. I've been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close friends say, if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have now written over 130 articles and recorded over 30 hours of VMware vSphere 7 and 8 videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Expert Exchange awards over the last 11 years working with the Expert Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program since 2011 and I'm currently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last four years. Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to restore vCenter Server 8 from a vCenter Server 8 backup. Now, I previously created a video uh, on how to use the vCenter Server 7.0.3 vCenter Server Appliance, the BAMI interface, to back up the database configuration of your vCenter Server. Uh, the procedure is exactly the same for version 8 of vCenter Server and there's no reason why that you shouldn't have um, that free function enabled and backing up your vCenter Server on a regular basis. Even if you back up your vCenter Server database using a third-party backup utility as a complete virtual machine, um, it will certainly help you in the long run if you're also basically backing up the database as well. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how we restore vCenter Server 8 using that backup. So, quite qu quite simply, you want to dig out your ISO. The ISO has to be the exact same version of the backup from your vCenter Server. So there's no point basically using a 8.0 U2 uh, and trying to restore your backup from that. That isn't going to work. So please ensure that when you've deployed your vCenter server that you basically maintain a copy of that ISO because you're going to need it should you need to restore that version. So without further ado, I'm just going to click restore. Basically, the installer turns around and tells you that this allows you to restore a vCenter Server 8. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to accept the license agreement, followed by Next. And now I'm actually going to specify the, the backup details. Now, it's probably worth noting, and you may want to copy and paste the configuration that you've got in your schedule. Um, so, mine's on an FTP server. So, we're going to specify the FTP FTP colon forward slash forward slash follow by its IP address followed by the port name port number 21 followed by um, if you have a, uh, a username and password like we do on our server here now this could be an NFS it could be a uh, HTTP server uh, it could be an SCP server uh, so whatever um, location you've used in your backup, that's the line that goes in there. So I'm going to say next. So that is very quickly connected to the FTP server. So it's now going to basically want, it's now asking me to select the valid backup folder that contains the backup.metadata.json file, which I know is going to be vCenter. Uh, it's vCenter 8A that we want to be restoring. I've got two backups here, uh, so I'm going to choose the latest backup. And you can see that we've got the backup.metadata.json there. So I'm going to select that folder, followed by next. Um, it's going to show me the information from the JSON file. So it's basically going to tell me the location, the backup timestamp, the host name, deployment type, the vCenter configuration, and its version. And I'm just going to click Next. So I'm now going to take type the IP address of our host server, our host ESXi server, 
that I want to restore that vCenter server to, followed by the root username and password, followed by next. Uh, I'm going to say yes to accept the certificate warning. Uh, it's going to ask me for a target center VM name, so I'm just going to call it that, and it's going to ask me for a root password. Just knock off caps lock. Followed by next. Passwords do not match. I didn't spot that. Maybe I've got caps lock on. I'll try that again. Followed by next. Now, apologise for my sniffling. Um, I still got a cold. So, yeah, we want a tiny default storage size. Followed by next. Uh, and we want to restore to our uh, NFS data store. Um, it's actually pulled that information already from the backup configuration. So, we've got the ability here if we want to change it but I don't because that fully qualified domain name matches that IP address. So I'm just quickly checking all that, followed by next, and followed by finish. And all this really does is it deploys a new vCenter server. So if I actually basically now log on to our ESXi server, So I'm going to log on to the server. Uh, we should see in the virtual machines there that we've got a VMware vCenter server 8A, which is being deployed. Now, all this configuration really does, it deploys the vCenter server first, um, powers it up, and then basically just squirts your configuration back into it and then basically starts it up. It's as simple as that. So, without further ado, I shall basically let this uh, carry on and deploy, uh, and I'll speed this up in post, and I'll, uh, I'll come back uh, shortly. Okay, and I'm back in the room. Okay, so we've um, successfully deployed vCenter server. There's nothing really new in that. Um, the next um, little ma bit of magic uh, is when we're going to click continue. And um, it does say if you exit, you can continue with the vCenter setup. Anyway, so we're going to click continue. And... Hopefully now, um, it's going to take our restore from backup and it's going to squirt that back um, into our vCenter server, which is deployed. And you can probably see that in the background there, that that is the vCenter server that's actually running. Um, so those are the parameters that we entered before. There's no encryption password. So I'm just going to click next and it's going to take that backup and it's going to basically send that to our vCenter server. So I'm just going to click finish. Once started, you know, yeah, okay, well, that's, that's a familiar sort of kind of message that we see when we're deploying vCenter server. Uh, in stage two, you cannot cancel. So restore data transfer is in progress. Uh, so once again, um, I'm going to I'm going to bob off. Uh, this shouldn't take too long because this is really a non-production VMware vCenter server. Um, and uh, I think the backup is only about 300 meg. 
So it's very, very small. Uh, and of course, this is just the one that we use in the Experts Exchange Lab. Um, one of our production vCenter server databases here is about 8 gig. Um, but that, of course, is you've got the tasks and events and the performance information in there as well that you, you've also captured that you also want to restore. Um, so this probably isn't going to take very long. Um, okay, I'm going to, I'll speed this up in post and I'll just disappear. And I'm back in the room. Okay, so uh, I just actually shifted a couple of things around so you can actually basically see that vCenter server had started and you can see the performance as all the services have started off. Um, the, the amount of memory consumption and the CPU consumption that increases as well. Uh, and it tells us that stage two, restore stage two complete. You've successfully restored this vCenter server. Um, so all that's for, for me to do now is to click the link um, and if all the services have been started uh, we shouldn't see any no healthy upstream uh, web client is initializing um, the IP address appears to be correct in the background 192.168.182.138 I'm surprised that I'm seeing an IPv6 here and the local uh, still says local host um, but that could be maybe um, let's just do a refresh it hasn't refreshed tools there we go uh, so the host name's correct uh, the IP address is correct um, that local host name was just the random host name that was given to the original restored vCenter server or dip or the newly deployed vCenter server with no config so let's click the getting started page and there we go so launch VC client. Uh, so this video has been running for about 36 minutes. So I'll speed it all up in post. Okay, no healthy upstreams appeared. Um, web, no web client initialization has appeared. And uh, that's just login as our administrator at vco.local and the password. So that looks correct. That's logged in correctly. And um, we should have our two HPE ProLine microservers. It's just taking a while just to refresh the inventory. Uh, it's deploying a load of plugins, downloading a load of plugins. Um, 002 is in maintenance mode, uh, which is correct. Uh, so I'm just going to basically take that out of maintenance mode. Um, X. Um, Host requires encryption mode enabled alarm. We'll look at those later. Uh, system memory login, host memory usage. Yeah, okay, that's a, um, ah, okay. Now this is rather interesting because um, Windows 11 um, is an encrypted VM that we use with uh, uh, VTPM. And that was enabled because we were using a native key provider. So I suspect that's what that error message, host requires encryption mode enabled. And I bet that's because um, it hasn't restored. Um, the key provider, that's interesting that. But he didn't actually recall that he didn't restore the key provider. And that would actually expect us to restore restore it there. Uh, so that's something to be um, to be aware of. Um, but if you're actually basically doing a restore, 
Then also make sure that you have a backup for your key provider um, because as you will see here, um, you will not be able to basically recover any of your virtual machines that use a VDPM that are encrypted. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this particular video is how we can um, restore a vCenter Server 8 appliance server uh, from its backup uh, using the installation media. So thank you very much for watching. Come back soon. Uh, hopefully I'll be better and goodbye.